Okay. Uh, welcome everybody here. We got a nice crowd this evening. Uh, anyway, we are calling it to order. Would you please rise and pledge allegiance with me? Over there. Throw everybody off. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty. Thank you very much. Would you please call the roll? Councilmember Acuna? Here. Councilmember Borelli? Here. Mayor Clarici? Here. Vice Mayor Thomas is noted as absent. Councilmember Wilkins? Here. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Announcements, uh, presentations to the public. Uh, we have a presentation, but is this being handled now or as part of? A part of the proclamation, the ceremonial matter. Okay, we'll, we'll do it during then. Okay. Uh, do any uh, council members have anything they would like to uh, comment briefly on? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a comment and ask for Mr. Steve Ewell to give us a brief update on the progress that we have made on the Vietnam Monument. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, we're doing really well. Uh, we've uh, gotten all of the plaques off of Main Street. Uh, they've all been polished up. We've contacted uh, all the family members and let them fill them in on what we were doing. Uh, the foundation has been poured. And uh, now, tomorrow, I'm taking down the, the emblems um, that will uh, signify all the different divisions of the armed services. And uh, the plaques down to um, Chapman Monument in Roseville tomorrow um, to be installed. Uh, we're still waiting on the granite. Uh, to be delivered, um, so that's our next step. So we still probably three to four weeks out um, before we start installing the granite, um, but we're getting much closer. It's going really well. Thank you, Steve, and I'd also like to thank Steve again, if you'll uh, bear with me, because from this rear window, Mm. The plaques were residing there for over yeah. 10 years. And you can see out the window. Uh, the plaques that from those soldiers that gave their life that were from Placerville, and we were attempting to get this monument off the ground and get it energy behind it. And just thank you to everybody in the community and our staff for um, sticking together and making this a, a possibility. And this is a culmination of a very long-term project that's been way overdue. So thank you very much, Steve, for the update. Thank you. Yes. Um, Steve, uh, this is directed to you too. Um, I didn't, I didn't tell you ahead of time, so I apologize if you don't have it. But you sent us an email with the report on the rise and shine. Do you have that handy that you could tell us what happened? Oh Let's man, well, I don't have it handy with me, but I can certainly uh, report on the day we, we had fabulous weather. Uh, we had a great turnout, somewhere around 375 volunteers from throughout our community. I think we did, I'll try to remember some of the numbers. I think we went through 75 gallons of paint, painted and 24. What, what did we paint? <laughs> we painted everything from park benches to tr train trestles <laughs> to um, fire hydrants. Parking uh, garage? Parking garages, yeah. Uh, we also uh, did a really, uh, the, the people out at Goldbug were just incredible. Uh, we must have carried out 20 yards of debris and brush and, and from Goldbug. Uh, out at Lions Park, we had a great crew also. They put a new roof on our score shed, uh, painted everything out there. They reestablished our uh, decomposed granite trail. Uh, same thing at Lumpston. Uh, they did a great job out there also. They, uh, replaced a whole bunch of bridges, walking foot bridges around the pond, and uh, did a whole bunch of painting also uh, there. The trail crew was amazing. We're still cleaning up brush piles off the trail. They made a lot of progress, um, and it turned out really nice. We also cleaned out the, the creek uh, for a major portion uh, right here behind our building up to the confluence. Um, so. I know there were sure a lot of bags of what was, I mean, it was piled high. Saturday yeah, hats night. off to our parks crew, man. We were all running around trying to keep everybody uh, supplied with what they needed, and, uh, 
and I think we did a pretty good job. Nobody got hurt. Also, that was Yay. really good news. And, well, and I was terribly lunches. impressed with your report and all the numbers, and <laughs> it was. And I just, I congratulate you and and everybody that was there and worked. And it's just, it was a wonderful community effort. And uh, my, it's just a thing. testament to our community, and how they pitch it, all pitch in. It's great. I have two things I would like to announce. Uh, two, one of a time, one. Once a year of efforts, if you want to see me personally in uh, red high heels walking up and down Main Street. I for do. A, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. For a good cause, uh, Center for Violence-Free Relationships. Um, I'm doing the walk a mile in her shoes. I'm not the only one. There's dozens of people that are doing this and uh, raising money for a very good cause, a very good local, uh, a local group here in, in Placerville, but also in El Dorado County that helps out on a... Um, a lot of really important issues so there's a walk a mile We're, we meet here in the morning on Saturday and I think we start walking around 10 ish I think or something like that what time I think do you 11 here? I think yeah I, I'm gonna be here around 9 <laughs> and then we'll walk and then we go down and around and back up here so that's a very worthy cause and then I know Jackie's in the audience well it's Saturday it's, it's the, this coming Saturday. yeah it's the what is this Saturday the 13th Yes, it's Saturday the 13th, okay. And here, it starts here, you go around, you walk downtown, you come back here. For a very worthy cause, you can go, uh, I, I, I will, I've posted this on my Facebook page, uh, you can donate up into, uh, even after the event, uh, to any of a number of people that are walking. Um, I think uh, Commander Wren is walking, um, and uh, a couple other folks, so. I don't know if our chief of police is walking. Brian Veerkamp, I know. Brian Veerkamp, oh, yeah. Supervisor yeah. Veerkamp walks. A bunch of people you'd recognize walk. Kevin? Yeah. So anyway, uh, so that's one thing. And I know Jackie knows in the audience, when is the ride with the mayor thing? That's like Thursday or Tuesday? The following Friday, the 19th. The ni yeah, see, there you go. On the 19th, you can uh, come to uh, Mosquito Park and Ride in the morning, like around 7 and ride with me and a bunch of other people down the trail to the government center, the county government center, where I believe Totem Cafe will be having coffee and donuts and stuff like that, and ride with the mayor. So these are two things I do once a year. I walk in high heels and I ride, ride my bicycle. So, uh, but they're both all for good things, all for worthy causes. May is bike month, so it's very important to know that. There's a bunch of other events in that as well. So I just want to make those two announcements. Do you have anything? I just want to thank you for doing that. <laughs> well, there you go. You're welcome. Well, I haven't done it. I mean, who knows? I could break an ankle. Okay. Uh, so that's it. Oh, for, oh. my boyfriend is going to be walking in my high heels. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> well, there, that'll be a He's sight. He's going to try it. That'll least. be a sight. Okay. Um, good. Okay. So uh, do, I understand we do have a closed session report. Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. Even though we didn't have closed session tonight, I can report out action that the council took <coughs> at the last closed session meeting, which was your April 25th, I believe, meeting. Uh, at that meeting in closed session, there were real property negotiations, and the council authorized the offer of the appraised value uh, to the Briggs Family Trust for a parcel of property which included a uh, permanent slope easement and a temporary construction easement related to the Placerville Drive, or Western Placerville Drive improvements. The amount authorized, uh, or the amount appraised was $2,600. The council did authorize the city to offer that much. That I can report out now that has been offered and accepted by the Briggs Family Trust. Thank you very much for that report. Um, okay, let's adopt the agenda. I move for adoption. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. We have a couple of very important ceremonial matters. The first is very important. Now, this is where we get serious here. Uh, we're going to administer the oath of office for a new police officer, Sean Willie. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. If Thank I could have uh, Mr. Yes. Officer Willie stand up, come forward. This is our newest police officer, ladies and gentlemen. Sean, go ahead and stand in front of the podium. I'm going to read a little biography, and then he's going to have the uh, oath of office administered by the city clerk. Um, Sean Willey uh, moved to Pollock Pines from Sacramento in 1998. He was involved early on the city by participating in parks and recreation youth basketball programs. He attended El Dorado High School, where he played basketball and assisted in youth basketball camps, and graduated in uh, mid-2000s. I won't say when. 
Uh, Officer Willie attended Folsom Lake College and received his Associates of Arts in Administration of Justice. He currently enjoys playing in the adult basketball and softball leagues, uh, trying to stay in shape, and he's looking forward to working with the Placerville community as a member of our police department. Um, and he has with him various family members tonight, including his mother, Eula May, and his father, Mitch. And if they'd like to come up and stand next to him while he takes the oath of office. And then uh, we'll get that underway, Mr. Mayor. Great. Thank you. And so did I. Thank you, Officer Willie. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, now we have a proclamation of the city of the of the city council of the city of Placerville, declaring May 2017 as Skin Cancer Awareness Month. And I'll read from the proclamation, and then we'll hand these things out. Okay. Uh, proclamation of the City Council of the City of Placerville declaring May 2017 as Skin Cancer Awareness Month in the City of Placerville. Whereas skin cancer is the most common type of cancer in the United States and whereas the American Cancer Society estimates one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime and whereas in El Dorado County, twice as many adults have been diagnosed with skin cancer compared with adults in the state of California overall and Whereas 90% of all skin cancers can be pre prevented by protection from the sun's rays or ultraviolet radiation. And whereas sun exposure during childhood accounts for 80% of lifetime exposure to the sun. And whereas regular daily use of SPF 30 or higher sunscreen reduces risk of melanoma by 50%. And whereas it is essential to teach sun protective habits early in life because children receive three times more UV radiation than adults do every year. And whereas, in a joint effort, El Dorado County Health and Human Services, Well Dorado, Marshall Medical Center, El Dorado Community Health Centers, and the City of Placerville strive to educate our local community about skin cancer prevention. And whereas the city of Placerville joins communities across the nation to increase the awareness of skin cancer prevention and invites all members of the community to attend SPF 17, Sun Protection Fest 2017, at the Placerville Aquatic Center on Friday, June 2nd. Now, therefore, I, John Clarici, mayor of the city of Placerville, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2017 as Skin Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Placerville, and I commend this observance to all citizens. So that's the commemoration. Um, I will just add a, not even two cents worth. Um, <coughs> there was an interesting article uh, not about a couple of weeks ago in the New York Times, and I think it was carried in other major newspapers and other things. It said that basically a lot of cancer you get is random. It's a mutation. It's 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 something you cannot help. Something happens in a in a in a cell and it goes crazy. Uh, but there are a few that are preventable, and this is one of them. And so we should probably do something to help prevent that one thing that we can actually have some control over. 
And I'm sure we've all known someone that has suffered and probably been taken by skin cancer. So uh, it's something that touches a lot of people. So anyway, uh, I have these three things, and I'm going to give them to Teresa Salerno. And, uh, and then, and, and oh, I'm sorry. There's one for Well Dorado, and there's one for the El Dorado Community Youth Health Centers. And please. Thank you, Mayor and, and Council Members. Um, my name is Olivia Byron Cooper. And we do have some representatives here from the collaboration that's been working on this project. So um, we have Terry Stratton from the Community Health Centers. If you want to come up. Um, we have Wendy Gooseman from Marshall Medical. And then we have a number of representatives from Health and Human Services Agency Public Health Division here as well. So thank you very much. And I understand there's a presentation. There is. So Teresa will be doing the presentation. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Teresa Salerno, and I do work for El Dorado County Health and Human Services Agency the, with the Public Health Division. And I am here to talk to you about our Skin Cancer Prevention Awareness Campaign. This is a campaign that I am very excited about. It's very personal to me. As Mayor mentioned, my daughter was diagnosed with melanoma skin cancer at 18 last year. So this is a very passionate um, campaign for myself. So I'd like to... Um, start off with reinforcing what Olivia just said and th that this is a collaborative effort between the Placerville Community Service Department, El Dorado County Health and Human Services Agen Agency, Marshall Medical Center, and El Dorado Community Health Center. And I would like to take just a moment um, to give special thanks to Wendy Goosen and Megan um, Buchanan with Marshall Medical Center, Terry Stratton and Diana LaBelle, who have been active with our campaign as well with the Community Health Center, Kim Stewart and Matt Lishman with the Community, Possible Community Service Department, and of course my colleagues, Olivia Byron Cooper, Catherine Jeanfro, and a big shout out to Kristen Tornacasa, who took the lead on this campaign. I also want to thank um, the Boys and Girls Club because they are very um, passionate about this campaign and they're actively involved with promoting skin cancer prevention awareness amongst their participants at the Boys and Girls Club. They did create um, a video that if it works at the end of the presentation, I would love to show it to you guys on skin cancer prevention awareness. So as the mayor said, what we do know, these are the facts that Skin cancer is the most common cancer in the United States, and it comprises of um, almost 50% of all cancer cases. And 90% um, of all skin cancers are preventable. And the most, um, most sun exposure happens before the age of 18. So it's so important that we teach our youth and our kids sun safety habits. And then lifeguards and aquatic um, instructors are especially at risk because of long um, time they're exposed to the sun near the pool. So how did we come across, how did we come um, into working with the Placeville Aquatic Center? It actually was pretty much a no-brainer because the Aquatic Center is open all summer long. They employ 60 staff where 15 to 20 staff are poolside at all times and they um, are visited by 350 to 450 pool users every day. Um, so that's a huge population that we're able to reach through the Aquatic Center. They also provide swim lessons um, for children 12 months through adulthood. Um, and their swim lessons actually works perfect with, with the program that we are working with because their swim lessons, every session is eight classes, which works out perfect. And then we also know that swimming pools um, have high ultraviolet radiation exposure. And the best way to protect ourselves from skin cancer is by protecting ourselves from the sun. So a little bit about the campaign. We did some research, research and we found the Pool Cool program. It's an evidence-based program that was created in 1998. And this program was actually tested in almost 900 pools and it has been shown to be effective in changing behavioral change with sun safety habits in kids. So this is um, the program that we're gonna use over at the Aquatic Center. It actually is an eight class series, which works out perfect with the swim lessons because with every swim lesson, there is a, a class lesson from the Pool Cool program. 
So these lessons take about three to five minutes and they will be taught by the aquatic staff um, instructors. We also adopted the Slip Slop Slap Wrap campaign and basically this campaign just reinforces what the kids are being taught at the pool. Um, it's really about, you know, slip on a shirt, slop on sunscreen, slap on a hat, and wrap, um, your, wrap some sunglasses on. And really it's, um, and they're, it's all, they're also encouraged to, if you're not out having fun, doing a fun activity, seek shade. Protect yourself from the sun and seek shade. Um, so this program is, has this really great visuals. It has animals, and um, there's going to be six signs that are going to be located within the aquatic center. We also have stickers that we created to promote positive reinforcement for positive behavior change amongst the kids. Um, and then, of course, uh, as the proclamation says, skin can May is skin cancer, skin cancer Prevention Awareness Month. So the way we're going to promote this campaign is we are going to be having a banner um, on Main Street the week of May 22nd, and that's our banner on the bottom. It's going to be very beautiful and colorful. Um, we also uh, are promoting this campaign on the city and the county websites, and we had a press release May 1st. And then we are, we are also promoting the SPF Protection Fest, um, Sun Protection Fest 2017, on the back of the activity guide. So this went out to a lot of residents within um, Placerville, city of Placerville. Um, one thing I think I forgot to say is that this campaign is going to be reaching out to approximately 60,000 people within the service district, which is a huge population. We are also, um, so the day of the event, let's hold on. So here's the slip slap, slip slop slap wrap campaign and the stickers. So that's the big sign. There's six of those signs that are going to be up. Um, it's very kid friendly. I think the kids are going to eat this up. They're just going to love the little animals and hopefully try to imitate them. And then the stickers are on the side um, for the positive reinforcement. We did create um, a sun, a skin cancer fact sheet on how to protect yourself from the sun. It has some facts on it. I did put a stack of them on the back at the back table back there for anybody who would like one. And I also on the back table um, placed this flyer um, promoting the day of the event. This, the day of the event is actually going to be really fantastic. It's going to have swimming and food, um, music. There's going to be um, different stations for the kids to learn different fun facts about how to protect yourself from the sun. And there's going to be prizes. So it's going to be a really great day. We're hoping it. We're hoping that a lot of people turn out. I really welcome you guys or I invite you guys to come to this big event. I think it'd be fantastic to have you there. And the campaign's going to run the duration of the Aquatic Center, so it's going to run from Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day weekend. Um, Marshall Hospital, <clears throat> they donated two sunblock stations, so we're going to have two sunblock stations at the Aquatic Center this year for a free sunblock. Um, they also ordered eight cases of sunscreen um, with the SPF of 30, so those kids who forget their sunblock or the parents that forget their sunblock, they will have it readily available. El Dorado Community Se Health Center um, donated travel side sunscreens for the giveaway bags the day of the event. And um, UV Skins has donated swim sets, um, hats, and UV detector keychains that um, will be given away at the day of the event as well. And then uh, Robinson's Pharmacy, it's not on the slide, but they donated some SPF chapsticks, which is fantastic. And our banner was donated by Western Signs, or Western Sierra Signs. So I really want to put that out there. That was really nice of them as well. So how are we going to know if we've reached, if we've created behavior change? So our epidemiologist, Catherine Jemfro, created an evaluation tool um, that's going to be implemented at the pool. The staff there are going to be doing a survey on our delivery of the lesson plans and whether or not it created change. And it's, it's really our hope that we are able to create behavioral change within the young kids. Um, and, and it's our hope that this SPF 2017 can become an annual event. And if we are able to create behavioral change, um, 
with Sun Habits, then we would love to be able to expand it to the other aquatic centers within the county and possibly the schools and the ski resorts. And I mean, to me, the sky's the limit. If, if we're able to create behavior change and we're able to protect our youth and, and everyone in our community, um, it, you know, it'd be fantastic. So we have a video from the Boys and Girls Club. I was just saying, we have got to get our AV system into the 21st century before it ends. Yeah, well, you know. Let's try for the 20th. Let's, let's wind up the Victrola here and get it going. Okay. Could we get this on our website, our city website? Yes. Yeah. We, th let's get that on our website, Facebook page, all that fun, you know, stuff. Okay. Fantastic. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to present um, before you. And if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to ask. And also, we can go... Um, you can, you're able to go to the WellDorado.org website um, for statistics and information about our skin cancer prevention awareness campaign. Okay, I have big blue thing hanging up. There we go. Okay. Big That was 19th century. Mr. Mayor, while you're taking your seat, I would just like to extend my great thanks to everyone that's involved in this project, bringing this forward and bringing it to uh, Placerville's Aquatic Center for the summer. Having the uh, sunblock stations is a fantastic opportunity to have literally hands-on experience for all the youngest and, the, and into the teens. Our pool serves a wide spectrum of folks. From, a lot of them are from all over the county, so you're going to get, a, hopefully, a wonderful outreach audience way beyond our city boundaries. and. Uh, it's just a really an important topic, and um, thank you very much for uh, allowing Placerville to be a part of the first year with us. We appreciate the opportunity.
Yes. I would second that. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'd like to point out two things. One is uh, I, we should all be very grateful that we have this rather robust healthcare community in our, in, our, in our town here that can actually go out and do these things and works with all the various and sundry agencies and groups and Marshall Hospital and everything working together. Uh, a lot of folks in the foothills don't have this kind of thing going on, so we should all be grateful for that. Uh, the second thing is I would like to thank, I, I thought I heard that Robinson's Pharmacy uh, provided some things. and. Uh, Chapstick, thank you, Dennis. And also, um, Dave Brazelton, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to Dave because he does a lot of things in this town and in this community that are very important. Rarely do we hear from him, rarely does he charge us. And I think that it's really important that, uh, and, and he's not the only one. There are, there are a multitude, whole, yeah. there are a multitude, I call them the usual suspects. Whenever <laughs> we have a thing in this town, it's almost always the same people giving of their time, money, resources, expertise, that sort of thing, and we should be grateful for that as well. If you happen to see Dave in this particular case, pat him on the back and say thank you. Okay, um, okay public comment period. Uh, the open mic portion of our meeting. Uh, this portion of the meeting is reserved for uh, persons wishing to address the council on any matter not on the agenda. Uh, that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council, our purview as it were. Um, we cannot take action on any kinds of things that we hear except for very rare circumstances which are almost certainly not going to happen. Um, you have uh, three minutes, uh, which we have a timer up here, and I keep one myself, so I don't keep looking over there. Um, I ask that you follow the golden rule. Don't say anything that uh, you wouldn't want to have somebody say about you. And uh, if you would, please, when you come up to the microphone, state your name and uh, where you're from. We would appreciate it. So uh, the floor is yours. Go right ahead. Shoot away. That was a really great presentation. Uh, it hits to the heart of something I'm concerned about, too. And um, ultimately, it's about saving lives, isn't it? I was really struck by the statistics of the occurrence in this county. Um, thanks a lot for the information. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Melody Moore. And I work with the Nomadic Shelter. Um, which provides shelter for the homeless of our community during the winter months. However, I'm not here speaking for them. I'm speaking as an individual. I, I think the name the group is known by is misleading. The people they serve are by and large not nomadic, but longtime residents of the community. They are our brothers, sisters, children, and even parents. My own grandson was homeless on the streets where his great-great-grandmother was born. These homeless people were born here, they went to school here, and they're registered to vote here. I'm not here to ask you to solve the homeless problem. <laughs> we are all agreed. I'm sure there's no one single homeless problem with a single solution. We allow ourselves to be overwhelmed with the complexity of the topic. When people have transitioned from the streets into housing, and it's nearly always because someone has given them not a handout, but a hand up. Someone, an individual. It's always a one-on-one -on -one relationship that helps a person make that transition. Not a program. <laughs> It's a combination of the starfish story, which you probably know the essence of that is saving one by one is, is critical. I won't go into the details of it. Um, and it's also putting to practice the proverb of teaching a man to fish so that he can eat forever instead of giving him a meal for a day. So that's, that's the approach I think that we need to take to solving the problem. But there's another aspect of it too we can apply that same line of thinking to the problem as a whole. First, we must realize that we're dealing with a multitude of problems and, the, and that these are not the homeless problem, but are in fact the problems of the homeless. These we can address one at a time, like saving the starfish on the beach. For example, recently, 
merchants, shoppers, or the police were upset because a homeless woman frequently sat on an electrical service box near McDonald's. Spikes were placed on top of the box so she couldn't sit there. She, she will find someplace else to sit. The problem really hasn't been solved. She's not going away. Her mobility is seriously limited and her need to sit has to be met somehow. Money has been expended on a solution that really isn't a solution. All we have is spikes on an electrical box. <coughs> if we identify these small problems as you know, the underlying source of the problem, what, what it really is, this person needs a place to sit that doesn't interfere with commerce or you know, the aesthetics of the city or, or whatever, whatever the issue was. Um, we need to really look at, at the underlying part of it and then we can solve them one at a time. Little tiny things like that, one starfish. Okay, can, are you? Okay, I'll wrap up. Th thank you very much. Uh, there, there are about 150 homeless in the community and I'm interested in solutions. What, the first baby step I'm going to make is place a message board in the upper room as a device for communicating community concerns to the homeless people. I invite you to contact me personally. I'll take the responsibility for owning that board and posting the messages. Um, and I think, you know, baby step at a time, we can work on these little, little solutions. We all want the same thing. So again, please, please get a hold of me. We will. Thank you. I, I, I'm intrigued by that idea. If you have written comments, please leave them with the clerk, and we, yeah, we'll I get the rest of them, and then we can read through the stuff. Yeah, I, I left uh, my... Oh, perfect. Thank you yeah, so much. I you. appreciate that. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I commend you for this effort to educate the public about skin cancer. It's an important subject for all the reasons that were described. I got my very first heavy sunburn at that pool depicted on the screen and have had skin cancer removed a number of times. I fought that stereotype that you could have red hair and still have a tan, one of the battles I lost in life. And can tell you that the cost of getting sunblock for your entire life is less than having skin cancer removed just once by Mohs surgery. And that's why I came up with a great idea about those dispensers you see in grocery stores, medical facilities, Marshall Hospital, among others, that tell you about the importance of sanitation using those Perel dispensers. Would it be great to have a dispenser for sunblock in a place like, let's say a parklet, where you're encouraging families to stay outdoors <coughs> for long hours during the heaviest sunblock periods of the year, and then you could have these signs that you have here that were nicely crafted in places like that that would educate the public in a place where they could benefit from it. Um, I know I went to Marshall to visit somebody in intensive care and there is this big sign that tells you about using those sanitary wipes as you go in and it'd be wonderful to be able to do that when it comes to using sunblock at a place where people are going to be getting it and not have a big canopy to protect you. Since I have another minute or so, just to ask you, Mayor, you very wisely uh, pointed out in the beginning of the year uh, about with some confidence that we had about $2 million in reserves. And then later we ran into a problem, the city, with some unexpected heavy surges of rain and big costs. I think there may have been some, some uh, reimbursements along the way. If you could tell us what kind of reserves, if any, we've got left, it'd be, uh, it'd be of interest. Thank you. Thank you, Kirk. Is there anyone else? Okay. Um, Dave. I won't ask you that number, but I will say, when are we having our first budget workshop? May 20-something, if I remember correctly. May 24th. I got that part which right. Which is a Wednesday. Okay. May 24th, Wednesday at 5 o'clock. So we will be having, uh, this is actually good for all of you, uh, we are having our first budget workshop um, on May 24th uh, at 5 o'clock here. Uh, they're open to the public. Uh, it's a fun way to see how uh, we go through the budget and where the money comes from and where it goes. 
and we will get to that very question of what kind of reserves we have. Of course, the issues around the recent storms and the wonderful wet weather we had, even though it was a little too much maybe, but it was still good to have, uh, that did, did take a toll on our, on our town. And, and we'll be talking about the cost of all of that. So uh, May 24th at 5 o'clock here, I guarantee you a fun time. Okay. Um, anything else? No one else? Okay. Do we have any written comments? Okay, great. Thank you. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion by roll call vote unless any member of the council wishes to remove an item for discussion. The reading of the full text of all resolutions will be waived unless a council member requests otherwise. So the first thing is, does anybody want to pull anything off of the consent calendar? No, no, okay, great. Um, I will open up public comment if any of you would like to comment on anything on our consent calendar. Seeing nobody, I will bring it back. Okay, do I have a motion? I'll move approval second. of the consent. Okay, we have a motion, a second. Would you call the roll, please? Council Member Acuna? Aye. Council Member Borelli? Aye. Mayor Clarici? Aye. Council Member Wilkins? Aye. Okay. We have, uh, let's see here, all right, next item. Uh, discussion action item, approve a request by the El Dorado County Health and Human Services Agency for the installation of a parklet to be located on Main Street occupying a single parking space within the public right of way and direct staff to process and issue a special temporary use permit TUP 17-01 and encroachment permit for the same Mr. Ravas. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, to give a little background, El Dorado County received a $10,000 grant from the 2016 Health Officers Association of California Communications Award to fund what is known as El Dorado County's Healthy Living Parklet Design Competition Project. City staff was first approached by Kristen Torrencasa. She is a department analyst with the County Health and Human Services Agency, Public Health Division, about temporarily locating a parklet on Main Street as a demonstration project to showcase the public health benefits of a parklet by encouraging physical activity. There is no formal process for the consideration of parklets that currently exists within the city code. Staff is processing this parklet through the special temporary use permit application process and this has allowed for a discussion item before the Planning Commission with final consideration to be made by the City Council here tonight. An encroachment permit would also be necessary since the parklet would be placed within the public right-of-way occupying one vehicle parking stall within Main Street. To facilitate public and stakeholder involvement, Ms. Torn Casa has given presentations to the Placerville Downtown Association on October the 6th of 2016 and December the 1st of 2016, to the Placerville Economic Advisory Committee on October 21st of 2016. Following these presentations, staff placed a presentation item before the City Council at your regular meeting on October the 25th of last year. Following Ms. Torrencasa's presentation, the Council did give unanimous endorsement of the project by consensus and it is, has proceeded forward. To further invite the participation in the design of the parklet by high school students, the county spo sponsored a design a parklet competition, which was open to all county high school students. Design application submittals were due by January 13th of this year. A total of 21 parklet conceptual designs were submitted which involved a total of 30 students participating from three high schools. The winning design received a $250 scholarship, along with their winning design being constructed. The Healthy Living Parklet Committee selected the top three parklet designs based on an established set of criteria. The selection of the winning design was open to the public from January 20th through January 29th of this year via online voting. The winning design was revealed on January the 31st. On March 7th of 2017, the El Dorado County Board of Supervisors formally authorized the Director of Health and Human Services Agency to submit 
an application for the special temporary use permit and an encroachment permit for the construction and installation of the parklet. The temporary use permit application was received by the planning division on March 8th of this year. The parklet would be located within a single parking stall along Main Street, originally proposed within the vicinity of, bell tower, of the bell tower, the specific location of which is yet to be determined. The parklet is proposed to be placed from May through September of this year. The winning parklet conceptual design was submitted by Emily Bobrowski. She is a junior at Oak Ridge High School. Her Main Street parklet description very much captures the goal of what a parklet is to accomplish. And I'm going to read her description. And it is as follows, and I'm quoting this. I see people relaxing and socializing in my parklet. It will support healthy living activities like running, walking, biking, socializing, and getting outside to get fresh air. The parklet will provide amenities like bike parking, seating, shade, and electrical outlets for charging phones and lighting for extended hours. I used recycled, repurposed materials like recycled fences that have fallen after storms and reused artificial astroturf from a sports complex or another sports field. I was also resourceful by incorporating an off-grid solar PVC with a battery pack that it can use the sunlight to create electricity to run the lights and electrical outlets. I used the theme of healthy living to influence my parklet designed by adding bike racks, which encourages people to ride their bike. It also encourages people that are walking or running around Placerville to stop and take a break. By including electrical outlets, it allows people to sit and socialize, which, in, which increases mental health while their phone is charging. Staff believes that Ms. Bobrowski captured the purpose and intent of the parklet in her parklet description. A parklet occupies a single or multiple vehicle parking spot, transforming it into a public space to allow people to sit, relax, and enjoy the city's surroundings. Staff would also like to commend the county staff for engaging high school students in this project. This project allowed for young people to become involved in a community, community project. To give a little more background then on parklets, uh, parklets were first introduced to the Planning Commission during a public workshop that was held last year, September 15th. At that workshop, both outdoor sidewalk dining and parklets were discussed as a preliminary step towards development of an ordinance. Following the workshop, the commission requested that staff confine the process to development of an ordinance to address sidewalk dining only. And of course, we all know that that progressed and we now have an ordinance for sidewalk dining. The proposed parklet project was brought to the Planning Commission on April 4th of this year. Staff requested that the Planning Commission consider the proposed temporary parklet as a demonstration project. And I want to emphasize that, that it's a demonstration project to provide any comments and suggestions and recommendations regarding the same for consideration by both staff and the City Council. As a demonstration project, the originally proposed uh, location was in the vicinity of the Bell Tower around 433 Main Street, which is an area in proximity to the Farmer's Market and adjacent to the Ball Bouts. We also looked at two other locations at the Ball Bouts at 447 Main and 451 Main Street. Following public comment at the Planning Commission meeting, two locations proposed are at the 447 and 451 Main Street, which is at Kelsey's Needlecraft, or at the Creekside Place. Again, the parklet is proposed to be placed from May through September of this year. During this time, the parklet would be heavily monitored. Oversight and maintenance of the parklet would be performed by the Healthy Living Parklet Committee. Following its removal and relocation to the public health facility at 931 Spring Street, the parklet would be evaluated by the committee to determine its value to the community. At that April 4th Planning Commission meeting, concerns expressed by the public and the commissioners included, and I'll just highlight some of the bigger con concerns. Uh, the first was public, uh, was the parklet location, and some of the suggestions included locating the parklet at the upper end of Main Street or on Broadway. The bell tower is not a good location. Locate next to a ball bout to protect one end from vehicles. Other concerns involve safety. Concerns were expressed about vehicles hitting the parklet, persons hanging out in the parklet at night, 
Don't allow for bark, uh, bicycle parking inside the parklet or redesign with the, bike, with the bicycle parking oriented towards the bulb out. One of the biggest concerns that we heard throughout the process was loss of a parking space, that a parking space is too valuable to be uh, given up for the parklet project. In general, parklets could become an attractive nuisance and uh, there were people that expressed the preference for benches to parklets. Staff did meet with business owners within the Creekside Place, including Timmy, the owner of Timmy's Brown Bag, uh, Delory, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, the owner of Delory's Confections, and we also met with Sarah Fudge, Jessica Orlandi, and Heidi Edwards, owners of the Bell Tower Bakery. These owners requested that the park would be placed directly in front of Creekside. Uh, staff also met with Steve Pace, and he is the owner of the Lighthouse, and he was very opposed to a parklet anywhere on May Street due to the value of, of a parking space and there being limited parking space on Main Street. In consideration of the request by business owners to locate the parklet at 451 Main and that the parklet would be uh, sited next to the bulb out with vehicles parking forward as opposed to backing up next to the parklet, staff is recommending this location. In conclusion, staff would again like to emphasize that this is a demonstration project. If successful and embraced by the public, the city could look at development of an ordinance and regulations for the consideration of future parklets, similar to what uh, the city has done for the consideration of the sidewalk dining areas. Staff is recommending that the council would direct staff to issue a temporary use permit an encroachment permit to the El Dorado County Health and Human Services Agency for the installation of a parklet to be located at 451 Main Street, occupying a single space within the public right-of-way from approximately May through September of this year, and, and provide staff with any uh, further direction. Uh, staff would like to announce that the uh, designer, Emily uh, Brobrowski from Oak Ridge High School, and she is, of course, the winning parklet, is here in attendance. And at this time, staff would like to introduce Kristen Torrencasa. She's been the uh, project lead on this endeavor and will provide a PowerPoint presentation that has detailed uh, the project that is before us. Good evening. Um, again, my name is Kristen Torrencasa and I do work for El Dorado County Health and Human Services Agency, Public Health Division. I'm very happy to be here. So thank you for having me. Um, I'm here to provide an update on the parklet project known as the Healthy Living Parklet Design Competition. I also have numerous public health colleagues in the audience, as well as community members, active living leadership team members, as well as the students, Emily, Avery, and Devin, as well as the teacher, Mr. Foreman, who have been very involved in this project. So I just wanted to thank them for coming. So again, what is a parklet? A parklet is just a small public area that transforms a parking spot. Parklets are temporary structures and provide a place for the public to sit, relax, and enjoy the city. Parklets are open to the public and they are smoke-free environments. And again, the first parklet um, started in 2005 in San Francisco and since then they've been very popular and are all over the country. So public health is sponsoring the parklet and this project aligns with El Dorado County's strategic plan for healthy communities, uh, as well as it's a direct result of our community health needs assessment and our community health improvement plan. So studies have shown that parklets have both health and economic benefits. We believe that design can impact today's biggest challenges around the physical, mental, and social well-being of communities. Parklets have shown to encourage physical activity through non-motorized transportation, providing pedestrians with amenities like public seating, landscaping, art, and bike parking. They've also been shown to have economic benefits because they tend to attract customers to them. 
a little bit about our project, the Healthy Living Parklet Design Competition. Um, it was a design challenge. We encouraged all high school students in El Dorado County to participate in designing a parklet. The theme was healthy living, and we wanted students to be as creative, innovative, and resourceful when coming up with a design. We were really blown away by the participation. We had over 30 students participate from three schools, El Dorado High School, Oak Ridge High School, and Adventist. Um, we received 21 unique parklet designs, and the top three de designs um, were narrowed down and then opened to the public to vote for their favorite, and we received over 1,600 votes. The top three designs were Destination Relaxation, Living Green, and Main Street Parklet. But if you are interested in seeing all 21 designs, as well as their descriptions, uh, we have them posted on our welldorado.org website. And I would like to add, because I did look at all the designs and read what the students submitted, and um, <clears throat> it was really interesting how they incorporated the healthy living theme into their design. And it was very clear to us, public health, that, the, that students and the, our youth feel passionate that the environment really impacts a person's health and well-being. So these were the three top designs and the winner is the Main Street Parklet that was designed by Emily Bobrowski, who's in the audience um, here today. So some of the steps that we've taken on this project so we had identified funding as well as received approval from our Health and Human Services Agency Executive Management Team. We met with the Director of Development Services in the City of Placerville as well as the Placerville um, Downtown Association, Placerville Economic Advisory Committee, and then we presented to City Council in October of 2016. So since my last presentation to City Council, we have presented to the Board of Supervisors um, and we, in March, in early March, we applied for a special temporary use permit. We've also partnered with a licensed architect, um, Arch Nexus. Charlie Downs has donated all of his time and has worked very close with Oak Ridge High School and the students to turn the original design into a more architectural drawing. So we're really grateful for him. And again, he's donated all of his time. Uh, we have also identified a contractor to build the parklet. Carter Kelly has agreed to build um, the parklet. We presented to Placerville Rotary as well as the Kiwanis Club. Um, I met with the owner of Solar Hut on Placerville Drive, and he offered to donate the solar panel, all the labor, and all the electrical wiring for the parklet, as well as uh, Forest Innovations. We met with them several times, and um, they are donating all the wood material for the project. In early April, we presented to the Planning Commission. So our next steps is uh, we need to, or we're looking forward to identifying a location for the parklet, as well as complete the city application process. Currently, um, in El Dorado County, County Council is the contract for the Carter Kelly to build the parklet. So currently the contract is pending County Council approval. And once it's been approved, uh, we would have Carter Kelly go ahead and build the parklet. <clears throat> Again, the parklet would occupy one space and um, would be temporary. Following the Planning Commission, I went down to Main Street to talk to some of the local business owners. And um, I just wanted, in terms of proposing locations from the Planning Commission, they like the idea of putting the parklet by a bulb out. So I have a couple quotes from Judy for the partners at Kelsey's Needlecraft. We discussed the parklet at our board meeting. We all like the idea and would enjoy having it in the area of our business for the five month period. I also talked to Sarah, who is an owner partner of Bell Tower Bakery by Creekside Place, and she let me know. She said, we are very much in favor of adding a parklet to Main Street and would love to have it placed in front of Creekside Place. I have personally witnessed how parklets bring communities together and increase foot traffic on retail quarters in other cities. 
So I just wanted to say thank you again for allowing me to present and considering our parklet project. Well, thank you very much. Do, uh, does anybody up here have any questions for the... No, I think it was a very self, I, I, and okay. I reviewed all the, the work that's in our, uh, that you've done, and uh, it seems like you've done a really thorough job in answering everybody's questions. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Emily. <laughs> Emma. All right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Emily Bobrowski, and I am a junior at Oak Ridge High School. I wanted to share with you the concept for my parklet. I created the design for my parklet based on the theme of healthy living. The, this theme of healthy living <coughs> means to me a place where people can take a rest from walking or riding a bike to socialize and to take in his, historic Main Street Placerville. I incorporated sustainable design by using as many recycled materials as possible including recycled fences and reused AstroTurf. Additionally, I included a PV solar panel with battery storage uh, to power lights for evening use and USB chargers so people can charge their phones while enjoying downtown Placerville. Since being chosen as the winner of the Parklet Design Competition, I have worked with my engineering teacher, Mr. Foreman, and a fellow classmate, Devin Hanical, on creating the working drawings uh, that are on creating the working drawings. Also, Avery DiVincenzi, a junior at Oak Ridge High School, is creating a custom piece of artwork incorporating the theme of healthy living. Um, I hope people relax, socialize, and enjoy their time in my parklet. Thank you for your time and consideration of my design, and I look forward to, see, to seeing my design come to life. Thank you. Hold on. <laughs> 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 so you're a junior, right? Yes. You're going to be a senior next year. Yes. What What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I'm looking. Well, since <coughs> I've taken this the engineering class this year, I'm looking into doing biomed biomedical engineering. Very good. Great. Thank you. You're the best. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thank you very much. Congratulations on winning the competition. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any s questions for staff? Okay. All right. Not at this time, sir. Not at this time. Yes, sir. You? Nope. Okay. Uh, the microphone is now open for public comment. We have, th remember, three minutes. If you have written comments, paraphrase them to get down and then uh, leave them with our clerk so we can get them and look at them later. So, anyway, anyone wish to speak on this thing? I'm Lindell Price. I'm a resident of Cameron Park. I don't live in the city of Placerville, but I very much enjoy coming to Placerville. Um, and I'm so impressed with the collaboration in this parklet project between County Public Health, the city of Placerville, and our local uh, schools throughout the county and students. And um, I'm I'm also impressed with the approach that's been taken for um, having a temporary parklet. I've about, I think it was the day before or day, day after the reveal of the parklet, I was actually in a parklet when I was in San Francisco. It was the first time and uh, f I w we were there for a family get together and uh, it struck me as a very, um, nice place to be so I um, but doing it as a temporary project will give an opportunity for people to see how it works and um, and go from there so um, I, anyway thank you very much for all this great collaboration thank you anyone else wish to speak Hi, I'm Avery Devincenzi. I'm a junior at Oak Ridge with Emily, and I'm doing the art for the project. And as soon as she told me about how it's going to be this little parking um, 
spot in Placerville, I knew I wanted to like be a part of it because I thought it would be cool for like other people to enjoy what she's creating. So I felt that making a piece for this project would also be like just really cool. <laughs> and I love the idea of having people be more interactive and having like the theme of <coughs> healthy living throughout it. That's why I'm creating a piece that kind of, I don't know how to phrase it, like the importance of like biking and stuff like that to improve like the city. So I just felt it was a great idea and it would be an awesome, it's just, it doesn't even take up that much space and it would be great for the city. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for coming and speaking. Thank you. Yes. That was awesome. Yes. <laughs> I, I, there's, some, there's someone <laughs> over in the wings. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, wings. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Mr. Foreman. Actually, I go by Max in the general public, but to my students, I'm Mr. Foreman. But yeah, I did uh, definitely wanted to say thanks to Kristen for opening it up. I'm actually a first-year teacher, so this was uh, uh, biting off a lot in the first year. But opportunities like this, um, I'm an instructor down at Oak Ridge High School, and I was uh, fortunate to be in the position to take over a pretty fantastic uh, lab computer design facility and uh, manufacturing laboratory. Um, so I encourage anybody that's here in the public, if you're ever down in um, um, El Dorado Hills, to come check out Oak Ridge High School, room F3 in the facility that I have, because it's actually pretty incredible. Um, but to my students, Emily, for taking this one on and putting it out there, um, we just kind of, I was actually fortunate that my uncle was helping with volunteering and stuff, and he actually has more of an architectural background than I do. Um, and Emily took this on as soon as I, I was just, again, an idea of, you know what, I'm going to set this free to students and see what comes up. And uh, Emily took this and ran, and it was me and my uncle just kind of giving her little snippets here and there and then just doing the best to get out of our way and see what happened. So um, this was coming there, and then it was uh, to be able to actually land and win the competition. But I'm also excited for the fact that it provided a really genuine opportunity then to bring in and develop a team um, and that Devin actually, Devin, I don't know if you're going to want to come up and say a word here or two later, but I might encourage it. But anyway, Devin was kind of one of the students where I wasn't knowing what I was going to, uh, what to expect the first moment to see uh, when I first laid eyes on him the first day of class as a new teacher. He uh, had a mohawk when I first met him, um, and he's actually in two of my classes, so I didn't exactly, fortunately, first impressions aren't everything, but it's turned out to be fantastic. Um, the Devin now is, has definitely applied himself here and has been a major driver forward in figuring out some of the technical aspects here too. Um, and then just how, yeah, teams of students, even just the opportunity to teach students how to interact uh, by email and communicate uh, real life problems. It's been a fantastic opportunity. Um, so yeah, I'm just very thankful for the opportunity as an instructor for these authentic uh, learning experiences and stuff too. So. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this item? Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. My name is Jennifer Franich. I'm a resident of Placerville. Um, and I would like to offer my support for the temporary parklet uh, from my perspective both as a a resident and a former city planner. Um, and while earning my master's degree in city and regional planning, I studied the, as evidenced, very strong connection between public health and the built environment. While the area surrounding us provides so many great opportunities for recreation, our downtown is lacking a bit in public spaces, in part because of our gold rush era origins. Uh, while this provides heritage worth celebrating and preserving, I think it's also important that our town continue to evolve to serve the needs of the residents and visitors that contribute so much to our local economy. Our downtown needs to be able to support all modes of transportation, including pedestrians and cyclists, and parklets are a great way to reclaim our public streets. Parklets contribute to traffic calming, making our streets safer, and provide outdoor seating that is also lacking a bit in our town. Parklets also encourage neighborliness and provide spaces for connections to be made within our community, which I think we can all agree is one of the best parts of living in a small town. The businesses that are lucky enough to have this parklet placed nearby will enjoy a free outdoor extension to their shops. 
a lot more people will pack into these parklet spaces than could ever be accommodated by a single car. Recent studies show that one space as a parklet attracts as many as 150 visitors per day. In other cities and towns across the US, businesses actually pay for the installation and maintenance of parklets in front of their stores because of the foot traffic that they bring, which in turn brings more people into their stores. Sales data suggests that the outdoor attraction is a boon for business surrounding the parklets, increasing sales by an average of 20%, even when it comes at the expense of a little parking. Um, so I hope that you will approve the temporary use permit for this parklet and that the city pursues additional opportunities for permanent public spaces. Um, and I also just want to make a plug um, for working in local government and for city planning for the uh, students in our audience. Um, I didn't ever hear about it when I was in high school um, or even in college. And I just want to let you know that there are careers out there. <laughs> So um, if engineering turns out to not be your thing, um, look into the policy side. As a former transportation planner, I endorse that particular <laughs> point of view. OK. Uh, anybody else wish to speak on this subject? What? You don't have to raise your hand. You just have no, to come up to the. <laughs> <laughs> Standing up is pretty much the signal. OK. Hello, Mayor Clarici and members of the council. My name is Megan Buchanan. I'm a resident of Placerville for over 25 years and a member of the Placerville Downtown Association. I would just like to echo what everyone is saying and uh, kind of voice my support for this project. I want to thank Kristen and Emily for their work on this project. And um, I just think it'd be really great for downtown Placerville. I want to remind everyone that it's temporary, that it's four months, that it's one parking spot. You know, think about that. And also, I remember living in San Francisco uh, in the financial district and working there. And there was a parklet nearby my uh, office. And it was such a pleasure to be able to go there during my lunch break and just sit, recollect, listen to some music, read a book, eat my lunch, and get back to work. So I'll keep it short. I just wanted to voice my uh, support for this project. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Megan. Oh, <clears throat> Uh, good after, good evening, uh, Mayor Clarici and uh, Council. My name is Dennis Thomas. I'm Robinson's Pharmacy, and I'm also the president of uh, the Downtown Merchants Association. Just briefly, the Downtown Merchants Association, um, I would say, overwhelmingly ap approved the concept that came to us early in the early in this process. I just want to lay it out there. There's there's some merchants that are in disagreement. However, the people at the meeting and the people that they, that were there. Uh, at the time the presentation was given was we're excited and uh, overwhelmingly supportive of this. Not everyone, but most everyone. And uh, personally, just a, a little story back in the day when I was taking my kids to baseball and we were traveling and doing that whole bit, we went, I went to Lafayette. And Lafayette is a little town, you know, not, not a really exciting town, kind of an interesting town, but they had parklets there and they had outdoor dining. And I remember the warm feeling I had walking around that town. And I, you know, I thought, wow, I would really like to do that in our town. Now, here I am also the, the chairman of the parking committee. And we're also responsible for making sure we keep all of our parking spaces available. And, and I think that's a balance. And I think that uh, I think there, there's a really unique opportunity here to find some balance between these two. Like most people said, it's not permanent. It could be. Maybe people will find this is really exciting, but I like the idea that it's a demonstration pro project and we have the opportunity to do that. I am not speaking on behalf of the parking committee, just that I am very <clears throat> dialed into you know, the absolute need for the merchants downtown to have parking. And at the same time, I think personally giving up one parking space for something like this is, is just a really great way to give back to our community for all those people that also support our merchants. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone? OK. Good evening, Council. Jackie No, City of Placerville. And I really just want to thank our youth for getting involved and contributing to our community. I'm really excited to see them get involved, and I am really looking forward to visiting my first parklet in the City of Placerville. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else?
Good evening. My name is Ben Butler. I'm owner of a restaurant down on Main Street. Um, what I'm seeing in here and on both sides, uh, I do feel personally that it does, I think one stall on this as a trial basis could attract an element of draw to Placerville, being Placerville is more becoming more of a destination than just a place to stop and quickly eat, use the restroom and get back on the highway. Uh, uh, just from my own experience, based on our customer base, uh, locals, non-locals, and tourists, especially the ones from the Bay Area to Tahoe, are finding more and more that uh, Placerville's become very charismatic, historical, and a very charming town that they're uh, more than happy to stop in. And with that, most of them do request to sit on our patio that's based outside. And uh, it's interesting to uh, hear the comments because most people uh, comment to me that they wish we had more patio space and I agree with them it would be nice but that's not in the works at the moment but uh, that being said that element of a draw to sit there and uh, observe uh, old Placerville as charming as it is I do feel one it, in this regard would uh, more than offset the uh, challenge <laughs> to lose one parking um, spot on Main Street especially based on the fact that the parking garage seems to be, from my experience, never full. Uh, I park on the second level every day, and there's only been probably a handful of times in three years that I had to park on the third level, which seems very vast with many open parking spots. So I think people are used to the fact that um, there is an alternative, and that is the parking garage. And typically, other, aside from our uh, downtown events, there always seems to be parking there. So I don't think it's uh, one spot would be uh, detrimental to uh, the merchants on Main Street. Um, that being said, I, I think it's a, a, a good taking on and uh, be a good trial to see uh, how the impact, uh, how it impacts Main Street and the merchants. Um, but I do find more and more based on their uh, customer base that, like I said before, not to be redundant, but the charm and the old shops and retail and restaurants of Placerville are becoming an element of destination. And people from all around, we have clients from all over the place that specifically come to Placerville, not just because our restaurant or some of the others, but the entire Main Street, the charm of it. So that being said, this does seem like a, uh, a uh, aesthetic uh, piece of beauty that people I feel would, you know, find Placerville that more charming, uh, another, another little level of draw to make <coughs> them feel comfortable, go downtown, visit the shops, spend money, be happy and go home. So anyway, that's about, uh, that's about all I got to say. So uh, <laughs> thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? So I just want to say congratulations to Emily, and uh, I don't want to be the big Debbie Downer here, but I'm Melissa from Placerville Hardware, and we, we have a loading zone right outside of Kelsey's, and so that's been a big issue, and I feel like if you guys are going to go ahead and approve this, I would definitely say please do Creekside for us, move it a little farther down from us. Um, parking has been a big problem for us with the, a lot of our contractors don't come to us anymore. They go to Home Depot. They don't, if they can't park right outside of Placerville Hardware, they just move along and they go down the road. So I just want to make that recommendation. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm getting up for no reason I need to stretch. Um, Kirk Smith. Um, a couple observations here. When you go to Walmart or Walgreens out in the Burbs, you park there, you're necessarily going to one designated business. That's not true for Main Street. So when you park in front of Kelsey's Needlework, you're not parking in, in her or that business parking space. You're parking in a space used and affecting businesses all up and down. So let me just give you an illustration. This one is a photograph of the Old Town Grills truck that parked in that spot. And they use that, they depend on it. Where else are they gonna go to load up their materials? That's right at the same place that's Kelsey's Needlework. They do a tremendous amount of business. This one is Placerville Hardware Store getting a delivery at eight o'clock in the morning. 
So when someone tells you that this takes up just one parking space, look at that 16 wheeler and ask yourself, is that one parking space? If you had a parklet there in front of uh, Pop Art, that's the kind of problem you'd cause for other businesses. And last week, when someone was parked illegally in a loading zone in front of Kelsey's Needlework, where do they go? One big 16-wheeler, this is on Friday afternoon, had to double park next to the bell tower. It stops traffic for a long time. That's commonplace. So that's the impact you're going to have on business. As someone who's been to Placerville Downtown Association meetings, I can tell you the representation about the, the membership being wholeheartedly in support of this is absolutely nonsense. First of all, there has never been a call for what is your response. And in fact, in February at the executive committee meeting, several members were asked, would you put this on the calendar by one of the officers for discussion among the members? And the answer was no, it's been decided. In addition, um, we had two meetings ago, a member put up her hands and say, let's have a show of hands of how many merchants are here. At the end of the meeting, there were six. As Dave can tell you, there's 270 plus merchants on Main Street who are members of that association. So the people who show up there is a tiny fraction. While there was a presentation about the number of, of, uh, uh, of where the spaces would be given at another meeting of the uh, uh, advisory committee for economic development, there was never one about specifically where this would go. So when, so when the people at the Creekside say it's fine with them, fine, but you're gonna cause adverse impact to them. At the, uh, Pierre gave a summary, but I wanna show you just, this is a summary of some of the statements I had prepared from the Planning Commission members, where they were extraordinarily intense, saying one, to avoid the adverse impact on businesses that should be moved around during that four months. And under the temporary use permit, you, if you're an affected business, have a chance to make an appeal. Could you realistically get an appeal in four months? No. So those are the reasons why, and, and, and we were already told by one city council member four months ago the decision had been made. And again, officers said the decision has been made, so it makes you kind of wonder, Which one? wow, when you're talking about all these things, why don't you ask the businesses who are affected, like Plastable Hardware Store and all the other businesses. Oh, and by the way, that, that survey that was submitted that has 36 signatures cited by the members, there was another list that didn't get submitted, so it's about 50. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Does uh, anybody else wish to speak on this subject? Great. Okay. We will bring it back here. <coughs> uh, do we, did, did all of that spur questions or comments or observations? I, I, yes. I just want to move 12.1 because okay. I think it's great. I love the parklets. So. Okay, well. But yeah. um, no, but everybody else, <laughs> they can talk. <laughs> well, thank you for letting the rest yeah. of us say <laughs> something nice about this. That's nice. Well, so. we can still Yes, but no, no. Still no. say something I, yeah. if you want. Yeah, to. yeah, yeah no, no. She, she's not yeah. prohibiting our Trisha's statement of free use of the First Amendment. Okay, <laughs> um, I did. I do. I will say. I'm not going to read it right this second because I'll let every anybody, everybody else talk, ask their questions, and why not? Oh, yes. I did receive a written comment from Council Member Thomas that she asked me to read. Uh, she cannot be here tonight. She's on very important business. Uh, so she, uh, so she, she couldn't be here. It was unavoidable. So she uh, asked me to read this. I will read it, but not right this second. Okay, go. Mark. Mark. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was expecting him to take Would you like time. me to read this, and then that way you can yeah, get go, it together? Okay. Well, go ahead. I'll Thank read you. This. Okay, this is from a statement by Wendy Thomas regarding item 12.1. I regret that I cannot be in attendance at tonight's meeting, and I would like to speak in support of the proposed parklet on Main Street. I would also like to address the petition circulated by Mr. Smith and signed by some downtown <coughs> merchants. And I wanted to, did, I, did you take it back? No. Nope. Oh, I still have it. Oh, here we go. And this is it, and it's many pages, and it has mm -hmm. many signatures. I just want to let everybody know for we full disclosure it. that we have it in our packet, and I looked through it, and... Uh, and read it. Okay, so that's what she's referring to. Uh, the petition states, we believe local government should work to increase the amount of parking locations downtown rather than continue to reduce badly needed parking. In reference to the proposed parklet, the petition also states that no placement in the historic area would be welcomed. 
This petition infers that parking should be a primary focus in making decisions affecting the downtown area. In that light, it would seem that this city council should ban street closures for events on Main Street, which create a loss of 71 car parking spaces and 10 motorcycle spaces. Furthermore, it would infer that the sca stagecoach rides around the bell tower should also be banned as they close off Stagecoach Alley during the heightened tourist season, reducing parking by about six spaces. However, I don't believe that the merchants who signed this petition would be in favor of either scenario. In addition, it is important to note that the Herrick Building construction closed off two spaces during their intense remodeling period. Having ample parking downtown is certainly critical to conducting business. It is equally critical to create an environment that attracts and welcomes folks into our city. This proposed parklet will only involve one parking space for five months, and it will encourage residents and visitors alike to gather and linger on Main Street from May to September. In my mind, however, there is a much larger issue at hand with this petition. Historic Main Street is the heart and soul of Placerville. It's the hub and epicenter of El Dorado County. What makes Placerville special is that we are a real hometown, known for our warm welcome and our hometown hospitality. This project involves our community's high school students and encourages them to create a connection with downtown Placerville. 30 local students employed their creative thought, their time, their passion, and their interest in our community to devise an inventive way to gather and connect with each other in the heart of our city. Over 1,600 residents reviewed the students' designs and voted for their favorite pilot project. What message would, it, would we send to the youth of our community if we denied this temporary use permit? To me, it would say that one, that bullet point, one parking space is more important than the engagement and creativity of our students. It would say that the 1,600 people who voted for, uh, on their favorite design were wrong to be excited and intrigued by this innovative plan. It would say to the executive management team of the County's Health and Human Services Department, the Board of Supervisors, Placerville City Council, the Placerville Economic Advisory Committee, and the Placerville Downtown Association, we don't care that your approval <coughs> has been sought and then you have supported this project. It would say to the students, family, friends of this pilot program that their ideas and work are not welcomed here because we are far too busy conducting business. This is not the message I wish to share with the students of our community and this petition does not speak for me. We continue to lament the fact that young people are not being drawn to our city we continue to ask ourselves that we can engage them to be part of this community. This project is exactly the way you do it. You invite and welcome their youthful perspective, you create space for their ideas and creativity, you support, empower, and celebrate their work. This is the message I would like our community to send, and this is in quotes, and it is to Emily. Emily from Oak Ridge High School, thank you for your interest in the city of Placerville, and we can't wait to see your creative design come to life. Thank you for helping us gather and connect with each other by creating a unique and interesting space to do that. Thank you for encouraging us to embrace healthy living in our daily lives. We welcome your work in our city. We value and support your creativity and innovation. We look forward to enjoying your parklet in our community. Closed quote. Okay, that was from Council Thank Member Thomas. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, <laughs> and we got an endorsement. <laughs> yeah, I guess. From <laughs> Council Member Wilkins. We've got okay. an endorsement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Go I'm very glad I let you read that because it got you time. brought me time, but it also stated a, a number of the community and social and Main Street issues, and you know, only in a small town would this fill, fill a room to discuss the use of one parking space for four months. And that's why I sit up here and do this, because it is important. Um, and as just Wendy has beautifully stated, I won't restate those issues, but um, this has been an, an issue of some concern. Uh, Mr. Smith has been active on social media for on and off for the last few months as this project has moved forward. And there's been some misinformation that's been, that's been expounded. And, it's unfortunate because a lot of folks don't have a lot of time, as has been referenced. They're busy with their lives. And again, that's why I do this and they don't. Um, they don't have time. Um, for instance, and I'd like to ask staff a couple questions and then I'll pontificate for just a minute. First of all, there have been a number of quotes that a number, a large number, many parking places were lost during the parklet design. 
And I've asked the city manager, and we have our city engineer this evening, and I'd like to ask her to state, to answer my question, how many parking places did the creation of the bulb outs actually, parking. excuse me, the loss of parking spaces when we created the bulb outs? I believe it was the loss of two spaces. Two spaces. Not many, not tons, not lots. Two. And the reason that was done is because our engineering department is very qualified and she used the existing fire hydrants and red zones and existing crosswalk locations to put those bulb outs in so that there would be a very minimal amount of parking places lost. So all those folks out there, social media, we didn't lose more than two. Another big question, a very, very valid concern, is the use of the funding for this project and why should it not be going to fixing streets? Why should it not be filling potholes on my street or replacing pipes? <laughs> So, Mr. Rivas, if I could ask for you to clarify for me, I believe that there are no city dollars involved in this project. That is correct. It was a $10,000 grant. It was a health grant that was given to El Dorado County um, Health Health Department to do this parklet project. They, and they applied, they got the grant, and it will be their committee. They will oversee uh, the construction, the maintenance, and the operation of the parklet during its demonstration duration. And because it is a health grant? Those $10,000 cannot be used for paving, patching, or fixing bridges. Would you agree with that? That's correct. Thank you very much, Mr. Rivas. So it's unfortunate that we get a lot of really misinformation out there and people just run with it, and it creates these little mini firestorms. That, that, you know, and you can see how long this process has taken. So as I, I think the added bonus for our, all of the students that have been involved with this, and especially the Oak Ridge students that have the winning design, they're also getting to see a very... Um, accurate uh, this process of how a community project w appropriately works its way through all the various uh, stages. The necessity to have all the public input to make sure that we're dealing with facts and not rumors and, and, and assumptions that we make sure that we are careful when we're speaking. Um, and I appreciate staff and the time that they've spent with this making this as easy as possible for the high school students uh, I think we should be consider ourselves blessed to have this kind of interest from our high school students to want to put a project on Main Street. And, and to you, Kirk, I have your truck photo. I saw your recent truck photo, and, and I am totally aware that at one time we had a location in early on that I would not have supported for the parklet, and that was up near the bell tower uh, um, in front of Pop-Up Bart, I believe, to be specific. And I think that would have indeed been an inappropriate location. And, you know, I've been in town since 1975, and, and I know the trucks weren't this huge when the hardware store got their deliveries. And they've evolved, and there have been trials and error, and they have worked out a system that makes our same little narrow streets work for a 60 or 80 foot long truck. And I'm sure they still do the same hustle down there to get the merchandise off the trucks that they've always done. So just like that, we will evolve, and this will be a, 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 a trial project. And I think it's very interesting that one of, the, uh, a little bit one of our public speakers this evening mentioned that traditionally the businesses adjoining a parklet enjoy a 20% increase in sales. So will we have six parklet applications next year when, if those economic increases in sales hold true? And Ben, you're in front and you, wanna, you run an excellent restaurant here in our town and I certainly appreciate your dedication. And I can assure you that when you go downtown now on Fridays and Saturday nights to dine, you'd better plan to park on the third floor because that is all that's left after 6 o'clock. This town is filled with folks from town, from wherever. So the parklet, I think, is going to work out just fine. So I would be happy to make a motion supporting the item. I think Trisha already did. She already did. So you can I'll, I'll be happy to second I, I just want to say, I just want to, I want to say a couple. No, I just want to say a couple things that um, I, I just think this is a, a brilliant idea and I'm just so happy that the schools were involved and th that everybody was involved. And I have been fortunate enough to go um, on several of the Chamber of Commerce, they call them mission trips, fact finding and study stuff. Mission. And all the, yeah, they're study missions and, and all the cities that we've gone to have had parklets. And how I wish that, uh, you know, I, I'd think, well, could we do it in Placerville? I know our streets are so narrow, <coughs> and I had my misgivings, but I, I really think it's going to work. And, and that's what this is all about. It's a trial and error, and we'll see. 
And, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some, maybe some unfortunate incidents, things that are going to go wrong, but that's why we're doing this. We want to find out and, um, you know, go forward from there. Um, and I, um, I think Ben was great to, uh, an example, he put in that outdoor seating downtown and it is probably one of the most popular places on Main Street. Um, and I, I think he, in a way, kind of showed what can be done down there. And I mean, it was a fine example. And uh, so anyway, um, I just think we need to give this a chance. And um, as you say, one parking place, and <laughs> if it works, I'd be in favor for probably more than one, and I'd probably get in all kinds of trouble saying that, but because there goes some more parking places, but I, I just think it's such an enhancement. and. Um, can't remember oh Dennis I think said about the warm feeling he got I feel the same way and that's what happened when I would go to these other cities and and see these parklets and uh, I, I just I I'm really in favor of giving it a chance and thank you all for whoever everybody that participated in this um, I, because I'm a politician and I have a microphone in front of me I will say a few things um, I do not want to discount the notion of parking um, I have worked up and down the Sierras in all sorts of small towns, and I've never been to a town that, where the, any of the merchants said, yeah, we got plenty of parking. They, they never do. They always say, we don't have enough parking. And I'm, I have learned not to argue with them because they're the merchants, and they're the ones who live on the parking that's out in, in their area. And so uh, even though sometimes we can actually demonstrate to them, yes, you have parking, there's parking here and there and everywhere. Um, I, you know, it's almost like therapy. Don't, don't, uh, don't discount other people's feelings. Uh, I won't discount their concerns about parking. And so that's why I think that the idea that this is going to be a temporary thing. And one of the things I stressed when I got involved with the project a little bit on my own was I said, listen, I said, A, this thing has to look good. It has to be somewhat bulletproof. It has to be portable because if all hell breaks loose, we got to get it out of there and fast. And what the funny thing was was everybody said, sure, okay, fine, we can do that. And they d they've designed something that apparently you can bring it in on the back of a pickup truck. You're gonna, we're going to lay it down. And so um, I have high hopes that it won't be a problem and that we will have something. Now, I do like the idea of maybe moving it away from the oldest continuously operated hardware store west of the Mississippi River uh, so that they can get their trucks in for unloading and whatnot. And I think putting it on the other side, on the, on the, uh, on the uphill side of that parklet would be fine. And in fact, we, I actually went out and looked at that and I thought that that might be a better location myself. So I think we can accommodate that. Um, one of the things that I've read, I've, I've learned not to, and I like to look at the social media, but I also know what it is. Um, it, this is a city thing. We're doing a city thing here in Placerville. This is city stuff. And why are they trying to bring city stuff into this town? Well, I'll tell you, there's a really, really nice parklet in one of our sister cities in Nevada City, the land of wooden sidewalks, where there are people that live in this town that would give parts of themselves to have wooden sidewalks, and they actually have real live wooden sidewalks in Nevada City, and it is cute as heck. Uh, and they have a parklet, and they've had one actually for several years now. And they had all the same questions, all the same concerns. And I went up, I didn't, well, I've been there. Um, and they have the same issue with parking. You talk to merchants on Broad Street and Commerce Street and Pine Street, and they all tell you, oh, there's not enough parking. So they have similar sorts of things, similar concerns, uh, historic town, historic charm. They've had a parklet, I think it went in, in uh, my, I read, did some research, I think it went in in 2011 or 12, it's been there since then. Um, I think Mr. Rivas has actually said he uh, sat with a coffee and enjoyed the parklet. And, uh, and I, I sort of remember seeing it, uh, but I also went and ch talked to some folks up there, and they've had problems, and they've overcome them, and it's been generally seen as an asset. We are not Nevada City. This might not be an asset, but I think it's worth the try. And I would like, I would hope, that the folks that don't see this as an asset, the folks that have, have genuine concerns, if, if we do this, support it. It would be nice. Um, I had a conversation once with a merchant downtown who I don't agree with on a lot of things, but I told that person that I wanted their business to be successful because it does no good for me to have even someone that I don't really agree with success of business go out of business. I would take no pleasure in that. I know there are people, some of them may be in this room, who want to see this thing fail. 
I hope they can put those feelings aside and support this project. I am certainly going to vote for it as soon as we, I shut up and let us vote for it. But I hope that the community supports it. I hope that we find a way to rally around this thing. Um, other com Foothill communities have done it. Uh, I think, I don't even think, I know we can. Uh, we're putting in safeguards. We're going to have PD keep an eye on it. We have eyes in the sky on Main Street now. You can't jaywalk on Main Street without being videoed. <laughs> So we'll keep a close eye on this thing. The folks at the county have said they will keep it up, and I know they will. So um, I am done. Point of order. Point of order? <coughs> Clarification, actually. Yes. To ensure that uh, the message is cl the clear direction to staff and to ensure that we protect the uh, loading zone area for yeah. the hardware store, we will, would, uh, would Councilmember Wilkins like to... Uh, amend her motion to Put specifically it. state the eastward location or what is that physical address mr Rivas? i believe that's 451 main street uh part uh, creekside so place yes. creekside so place. everyone understands staff gave us a couple of different options this evening so right. we want to make sure that we would, okay. would that be agreeable okay. yes get great. the right great. space great. So we, yeah that way it's clear to great. staff and the okay public. Great. I'll amend my, emo my motion. Who seconded it? You or did I? It has, I was going to second it whenever we decided. You seconded it. No, I just said I wanted to say Go a couple ahead, of things, then. but I want to second it. Good. Okay. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. And I think for this one, we'll do a roll call. Yeah. yeah. Call the roll, please. Councilmember Acuna. Aye. Councilmember Borelli. Aye. Mayor Clarici. Aye. Councilmember Wilkins. Aye. All righty. Thank you. Look forward to seeing this happen soon. Go forth and make a parklet now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Is that the same? <laughs> yes. A adopt. We'll give everybody a minute or two to leave. I, I always, this always happens. There's a lot of exciting stuff on this agenda. <laughs> I know the guy turns around and goes, I'm not buying, I'm buying, I'm buying that. <laughs> All right. Go. Why don't we all take two minutes and go get a drink of water and... Oh. Yeah. See, maybe five minutes then. Thank you. Thank you for giving me that stuff. I was going to pull it. This got really ugly about parking. I was going to pull out that number. I know. I know. Because I just like but Because parking is so fucking precious. Wait a minute. Why do you guys take it all out?
Okay, everybody, let's get back to our seats, please. Mark, Mark, Patty. Are you, are you taking the purple? Apparently you are, okay. I am here. You are here. We are here. And it's all good. And Sue, we still have Sue Rudman in the audience, so... And the lady from the and the lady from the very fine framing Eric store. Eric is here. Eric, so, Eric's always so here. Eric's over there with Sue. Dennis is back there yes. talking. Hi, Dennis. Hello. No, it's all good. All right, let's get back. All right, let's get back to business here. Let's start this out. All right. Item twelve point two: Adopt a resolution of intention to initiate amendments to Title 10 Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 4, General Regulations, Section 17, Sign Regulations of the City Code regarding regulations of si Wait a second, does this thing actually say the General Regulations, Sign Regulations of the City Code regarding regulations of signs? Well, they're different sections. You That's know? great. That's like and liar's chapters. poker. You, how many times can you get signs in there? Okay, Mr. Ravas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Um, in the Reed versus Town of Gilbert, Arizona, the United States Supreme Court clarified when municipalities may impose content-based restrictions on signage. Uh, the city of, or the Town of Gilbert has a comprehensive sign ordinance that imposed stricter limitations on sign advertising religious services than signs that displayed political or ideological messages. When the local church uh, uh, was cited for violating the ordinance, uh, the church filed a lawsuit in which they argued that the town's sign regulation violated its First Amendment right to freedom of speech. The court did hold that the restrictions were content-based restrictions that were applied differently depending upon the message of the sign, and thus Gilbert's sign ordinance was unconstitutional, violating the First Amendment of the Constitution, freedom of speech. It is the opinion of staff that changes um, are needed to bring the city of Placerville sign ordinance into compliance with the U.S. Supreme Court's decision. The city's current sign ordinance does make distinctions between political, directional, directory, real estate, temporary signs, etc., applying differing standards for different categories, which may be considered content-based regulations and may run afoul of the Supreme Court opinion. Staff will prepare draft revisions and work with our city attorney, Mr. Driscoll, uh, prior to bringing the draft to the Planning Commission for consideration and recommendation that will be brought to the City Council for adoption of any changes. Uh, staff is recommending that the Council adopt a resolution of intention to initiate amendments to Title 10 Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 4 General Regulations, Section 17 Sign Regulations of the City Code regarding regulations of signs. That concludes staff's report. <laughs> Thank you. It sounds like something out of Monty Python. You know, it's like, you know, the regulations of the sign, sign of the sign, sign regulation <laughs> sign, anyway. Right there with the Ministry of Funny Walks. Funny, okay. Oh, that's where I was going. There funny you go. Walks. Okay. <laughs> I, love I don't know what to do with this. Okay, does anybody have a question for staff? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, wanna, okay. I had one question for the city attorney. I would like to, uh, later on this evening to get his thoughts on this uh, Supreme Court of the United States decision that's here. That's many oh, he already probably well, knows Actually, that. I thought I told Pierre this too. He did an excellent job of summarizing that decision in a very, very clear and uh, concise way. And I tried to hire him as a law clerk. But <laughs> excellent. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay. I, I, okay. So this is like a... a, a this is a notification of an intention to do something. We're obviously not doing yeah, anything not, right yeah. this minute, and you're going to bring back all sorts of things to us to look at, and it's going to go through some process, correct? correct. That is correct. Basically, okay. what you would be doing is directing staff to go forth okay. go and forth. make any go necessary forth. amendments. <laughs> it'll go through the formal process. Right behind the parklet, people. Go <laughs> forth. Okay. I do have a question, though. So excluding any signs that might be in the public domain this moment can you t tell us what a sign would look where is the sticking point i mean i know the example you gave but but like what around here what would the sticking point be or is there one or yep. is this just like preemptive um 
Yeah, staff hasn't spent a whole lot of time getting getting into the ordinance, but we we suspect that they will run into some issues. For example, we exempt political signs, and political signs are for the purposes of a particular owner showing preference for a candidate or okay. some proposition. Okay, so there are very little regulations for that type of uh, speech. Don't don't because we though put a, don't we though put isn't there like a you can only have political signs out during like campaign. Right. 60 like, days. Right? Yeah, so many days before the campaign. Days prior, 60 days, 90 days, 15 days after. In the county and 60 right. days in the and city. And people right. can put a, signs in their windows. Right. Their Why does, what is this different then? Well, you cannot distinguish your regulations based on the content of the sign, be it. Oh, I, okay. Okay, okay. It's, it's content based. Okay. And uh, that deals with non-commercial signs. Right. Uh, commercial signs are potentially uh, not covered by the by this decision, um, although there's some decisions that would tend to think the courts may go in that direction, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure it's going to get there. Okay. Um, we have one good advantage in that um, the uh, I, I attended a webinar on this case, and uh, the guys that put it on were experts in this field. The town of Gilbert hired them. Oh. to design their new sign ordinance. And they have a draft of it out. Oh, good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there will be no wheels reinvented in this community. We're going to be able to at least learn from what they have okay, done. Good, good, good. And, okay. you know, what we can use, it will fit us, we'll, we'll adopt, otherwise we will go in the direction. I, I would encourage then having examples, like real clear examples of what is and what is not right or correct or doable or whatever because I think that really helps the public out and and owners and people that might have signs you know on their properties and stuff kind of help them with that you know this is and and if you do it before you start making decisions at least then you could say no this was the example and this is what your sign looks like you know I mean rather than it then, before then, the because then, someone, start will, being then someone will come up to the podium and tell us that we're doing this all ex post facto and we're picking on people which we wouldn't be but you know we'd yeah, secret deals and stuff like that. So anyway, that's just my suggestion. Lots of examples, pictures, little words. Okay. I think that's a good idea, John. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I try. Okay. Uh, would, <laughs> would anybody from the public like to... <clears throat> oh, no. You're <laughs> kidding. We have no way. <laughs> Hopefully you're just going to support the First <laughs> Amendment to the Constitution. And Okay, go ahead. Hi. I'm just uh, Sue Rodman, resident of Placerville. Absolutely. And I would hope that as we do this, we take a look at the fact that Highway 50 is a scenic byway. Mm -hmm. And Highway 49, I believe, also has some scenic byway constraints on it. And the state of California has some regulations as does the federal government for scenic byways. So we need to be careful with our sign ordinance that we don't cross those and that the things that we have <coughs> done to protect our scenic byway status, that we preserve that. I don't think the town of Gilbert, Arizona has any scenic byway concerns. Do we? So um, that would be my concern that we be careful as we go through that we protect those scenic byways. That's right. um, we're not going to be able to trump anything that the state of California does. So whatever really? our ordinance does, it will not take precedent right, over what right. the state yeah, is. Yes, yeah, so it would have to respect already existing. Okay, fine. Okay. Anyone else? <sighs> no? No? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's bring it back here. Well, Mr. Mayor, as you've clearly stated, this is just the going forth part of this. We're directing staff yes. to begin this process, and I think they have right. heard a few good comments this evening, and I look forward to seeing them proceed. So I'll go ahead and move for approval of item 12.2. Second. Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Go forth and make signs. Make signs. Go forth. That's <laughs> the, the sort of... Uh, good law clerk, huh? Okay. There's one more, isn't there? Yep. Oh, yes. Okay. One more. It's a city engineer lady. All right, we have item 12.3, the WPI, Western Plasterville Interchange Cooperative Agreement. Uh, approving, let's see, adopt a resolution approving a cooperative agreement with the Department of Transportation, Caltrans, in the amount of $6 million, 
$12,000 for construction of the Western Placerville Interchange Phase 2 project, CIP 407051. Let's see if I need to, if I really want to read the rest of this. Well, just say no. a suggestion, nah. one through four. And then, yeah, and, and then two through four. Okay. Staff. Good, good evening, Mayor Clarici and members of the council. We've been getting quite a few questions uh, about the um, update on the project, and so I'm going to take a brief chance to provide that. As a recap to the scope of the Phase 2 project for Western Placeville Interchange, it includes construction of a new eastbound US-50 off-ramp at Ray Lawyer Drive, realignment of uh, Ray Lawyer Drive and Forney Road intersection to conform to the improved interchange, construction of a Class 1 bicycle and pedestrian shared facility, and construction of a new El Dorado Transit um, uh, authority uh, park and ride facility in the southwest quadrant of the new Ray Lawyer Drive interchange. As you know, the Western Placeville interchange has been regionally planned as a significant project for some time now. It's been uh, included in the last um, uh, four uh, cycles for the Metropolitan Transportation Improvement Program as well as the Federal Transportation Improvement Program, better known as the FTIP and MTIP. And we've also already successfully completed all of phase one as constructed through phase 1A with the westbound um, off or on ramp at Ray Lawyer Drive. And uh, in December, we completed the improvements for phase 1B, which included pi uh, bicycle and pedestrian facilities that serve the public and the county government center um, as completed. Phase two happens to be the proud recipient of precious and few state transportation improvement program dollars program towards construction. This time last year, we received the very fortunate news that while other state uh, projects outside of the region totaling $754 million were removed from the program, our only regional interchange project with $5.542 million in uh, state transportation improvement program funds was not removed. The project was merely deferred by one year, allowing the only STIP funded project in the county to remain in the program. The project has been fully cleared through its approval of the environmental impact report on June 24th on 2014. Project report, supplemental project report, and supplemental project report number two. Since that time, the project team and its partners, which include the El Dorado County Transportation Commission, El Dorado County Transit Authority, El Dorado County, SACOG, and Caltrans, along with the city and its hired design consultant, Dockin Engineering, have been working feverishly on design, utility coordination, right-of-way, and project funding to deliver this project for an anticipated release for bidding in fall of 2017 and anticipated start of construction in spring of 2018. With a monthly and sometimes weekly meetings at Caltrans District Office uh, in Marysville, we've collaboratively worked with Caltrans staff from all departments to put this project and keep it on track. With the delay of one year of the STIP funds and escalation of recent bidding prices, an amount of funding shortfall for the project was identified. Value engineering of the design commenced and included such considerations as construction sequence and staging, roadway excavation and structures to name just a few of the many ways we looked at internally cutting the costs. Once we had exhausted those efforts, the team then looked for outside funding sources. Since this project is directly tied to the state highway system on, on Highway 50 and included a fair amount of requirements tied to obtaining a state encroachment permit for construction that benefit the operations of Highway 50, starting with Caltrans was a logical source for additional funding. On April 4th, EDCTC city staff and Caltrans staff met and showed the estimated benefit value of approximately $470,000 of improvements to the state's facilities. Caltrans supports the project, acknowledged the benefits, and agreed to fully fund that amount. We're grateful to have them now as a project partner. At its May board meeting, EDCTA also brought forth some additional funding to cover the park and ride shortfall. That component is now fully funded. Due to the regional significance of the project and its direct functional service to the county government center, county fairgrounds, the city and county have also worked together to fund the remaining roadway items and agreed to have the EDCTC board program approximately $272,000 in urban state transportation block grant program funds at the May 4, 2017 board meeting. The relinquishment agreement you have before you this evening addresses the relinquishment or exchange of right-of-way between the city and the state. This is part of a huge milestone in completing the right-of-way process in preparation for allocation of funds for construction. The item before you pertaining to the cooperative agreement memorializes the state 
and project construction funding in place for this project and is anticipated to be approved later this month by the California Transportation Commission on behalf of the state. The um, staff report outlines the uh, budget as well as um, the anticipated costs and funding sources I've spoken uh, towards um, with regards to the STIP money, uh, various CMAC money, um, and various um, uh, money contributed to uh, the project by EDCTA as well as EID for the relocation of their water lines and the additional money from Caltrans and through the urban STBGP funds. Our options this evening are to approve the cooperative agreement and state highway relinquishment agreement with Caltrans and authorize the city engineer to prepare and release a request for proposals for construction management services for the said project or direct staff to negotiate different terms for the cooperative agreement, state highway relinquishment agreement with Caltrans or to direct staff to take other actions. The recommended action by staff is to adopt a resolution approving a cooperative agreement with the Department of Transportation Caltrans in the amount of $6,012,000 for the construction of the Western Placeville Interchanges Phase 2 project, CIP 407051, and approving the State Highway Relinquishment Agreement with Caltrans pursuant to Section 73 of the Streets and Highway Code, relinquishing a portion of the State Highway within the City jurisdiction and authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute the same and authorizing the city engineer to prepare and release a request for proposals for construction management services. Sorry for the long report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, do we have any questions? No, sir. Okay. no, I just love the way, though, we throw around 12 you know, $6 million. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I think it's great is there's $6 million and then 12000 and then it's like 6000 and 12000 12 well, million, yes. $6 million, $12,000. 12, 12, yes. yes. Okay. You know, but um, I just want to say that uh, thank you. You just mm -hmm. did a really yeah. great report. Excellent and job. And thank you. It certainly is right. understandable. And a lot of partners at the table. Oh, boy. You're advocating for a city and the highest project for the lowest, lowest cost. Awesome job. But talk yeah. about cooperation from yeah. a lot of agencies. It just shows what Difficult can be agencies. done when we're out there. We're very fortunate and very grateful yeah. to have right. all the project We partners. talked about this at transportation, but certainly thank you for our, all Our the city manager would like to heap I on. Over here. I heard a click. Go. I just want to comment on that same thing. Um, Rebecca has been running this. She's been dragging me along to a couple <laughs> of meetings. And um, it, it's been, you know, I was involved with, you know, we did, uh, uh, phase 1A and 1B, and, and there were some complications with those. Uh, it's been amazing to me, though, the number of hoops we've had to jump through on this one have been far more than what we experienced on... But we uh, did we, it. That's, the, that's the amazing part. And that's the, uh, as late as this afternoon, we were... We were uh, jumping. <laughs> jumping through some more hoops, and, and we, we got through them. That was, that's the key. We got through them, and we made some good progress again this right. afternoon. And right. um, this everything's... Seems to be yes. coming together, and and I'm thinking that uh, we're we're on the right track. Sure. And I just want to recognize Rebecca also. She's done sure. a great job pulling everything together. Uh, also, Woody with uh, El Dorado oh, County Woody's Transportation Commission has been right there beside us all the way and helping mm -hmm. us yep. uh, with his contacts <coughs> and everything we've done. So it's been a, it's been a he was in interesting DC. road, and yeah. it's been That's been good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. He's done a um, job. I think it's important, and because of my past lives as a planner and doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This is how small communities lose money, because they have these kinds of projects. There's these multi-phase things. They've got these multiple things going on. They don't have a tremendous number of resources, <coughs> and literally they give up. I've seen, I've seen small towns and other places go through the stiff process, and they just give up because they cannot hit their marks and say their lines. And a lot of larger jurisdictions actually rely on the fact that a lot of smaller jurisdictions can't do it and so the fact that we have continued to work through this process with our capable staff with our partners you know a month ago we were looking at a, a I forget however many hundreds of million I don't know it was, a, it was a lot of money it was a real problem and then within a couple of weeks we had sort of taken care of it and I think it's just remarkable a lot of places wouldn't have been able to do that and I, I know that um, I know that it gets somewhat repetitive but uh, we are fortunate to be here in this place at this time with the staff we have because, and the folks around us. We need to recognize oh, the Transportation absolutely. Commission, SACOG, the State of California, District 3, a whole bunch of people. But it starts here, and I think it's really important to recognize that. So we're recognizing it. Um, since I'm on the Transportation Commission, I've already heard all the numbers and everything, so I don't really have to ask any questions. Do you have any questions or comments that you would like to add? No? Okay, you're good. Okay, good. Uh, does the pub, the, would the public like to comment on this? 
<laughs> really? Sue. Oh, come on, oh. Sue. Come on. It would be disappointing. Sue Rodman, resident of Flasserville, former federal employee, so I know how tangled webs these things can get, and I am so impressed with our engineering staff and our their ability to work through all the tangled web and come out positive for Placerville. Good <coughs> job. Thank you, Sue. I think it's important to note one thing, too. This phase does not include a single roundabout. Okay, no roundabouts. <laughs> All right, just want to make well, that clear to the public. I'm not about that. Well, well, if you had one in this part of the project, it would be weird. But no, there's no roundabouts in this project. I just want to say that. Okay. All right. Um, bringing it back here. I'd like to make a motion that okay. we... Uh, that I'm sorry? Go ahead, please. Oh. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. That we adopt a resolution. Uh, do you want me to say no, it? No, okay. no. The staff recommendations. Sta uh, staff's recommendations <laughs> yeah. for one through four. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay, uh, we have a, a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Council Member Acuna? Aye. Council Member Borelli? Aye. Mayor Clarici? Aye. Council Member Wilkins? Aye. Yay. There we go. Very exciting. <laughs> Onward and upward. Okay. Closer. Council reports from other agency meetings. El Dorado County Transit Authority, Patty. <clears throat> um, we, um, the things that were reported on um, the, the taxi voucher program mm -hmm. that they've been doing yeah. uh, down in El Dorado Hills seems to be coming right along. Um, and I'm just going to be, first of all, give kudos to Mindy, who heads this department. She's another one that we're very, very fortunate to yep. have. And um, so many times there's requests from I mean, th this transit committee is for the whole county, and um, she always, you know, she never says no, and it's like, we'll look into it, and if it can be done, Mindy will get it done. So anyway, the tra tra uh, taxi voucher program is working. They're getting better, and then right now they're talking about a, a county line multimodal transit centers, right. and they're doing a study on that, which would be down the, on the county line, um, which would be fantastic. And... Um, Let's see, what else did she talk about? Um, the, um, is Heidel on that, or? What? On, oh, on that. Is on, he on the? Is part of that, no. Yeah, he's just on the commission, yeah. so, oh. I mean, yeah. yeah. It'll come back to the and, transit um, committee. And, and the then transit she talked, and then we discussed so this, yeah, uh, what we just it's voted on. He, so, on anyway, yeah, uh, it was, it was a great commission. meeting, so. Yeah. Okay. That's what went on. Okay. Uh, let's see, Transportation Commission, let, uh, keep it brief. Uh, May is bike month, so you can bike to work with, well, I, I'm not biking to work with me because I don't work at the county. <laughs> You'll be biking somewhere where some people work. I will be going in that direction. It starts up there, I, as I already mentioned, but it'll be fun. I'll be on a bicycle uh, and that'll be fun. Um, I think the two, obviously, we won't go back through it, but obviously at this last Transportation Commission meeting was when we voted on all these bits that are going to make the WPI happen. So right. all of the funding stuff, the last bits of the funding, because they did it at Transit, they've done it, you know, in other places. So this is when it all kind of came together. So we, I won't go over that. I think the only other thing, too, is that it is looking like SB1 um, now, I guess it's, a, it's a, uh, an act now. I guess it has a name rather than SB1, but we'll call it SB1, which is the gas tax and all that other stuff. It's, it is starting to look like maybe the original, you know, we'll knock on Harewood again. The original um, estimates might be a little low, and it might actually generate more money than they anticipate. And actually, for this community, uh, it might almost go from being sort of a, eh, it's not, you know, we, you know, eh, I don't know if it's right for the citizens of Placerville specifically, to something that might actually have a return that actually makes sense for the citizens of Placerville. I will remain and be very, uh, um, I will view it very cautiously. Uh, but the numbers that are starting to be revised and revived appear to make it a little bit better for us. And right. so that would be fantastic. Um, what else was there? Go ahead. Well, you don't have to show it to me. Well, you're, you're, you're the chair. I know I am, but you're given the report, so well, go ahead. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, okay. you do it. I'm not going to do that. Well, you know, you I, I, I'm going to show you guys something. You this is a report that our chair gives uh, <clears throat> out, and this is, these are all the things that, that, that our commission works on. And it's just a constant, constant uh, 
thing that they go through. And again, we are blessed with the Transportation Commission that we have and the way they go after things. Um, you mentioned Woody. Um, he just does an excellent job. He's right on top of everything. Um, and he keeps us informed of what he's That's doing good. and what's going on. So, um, and I, I think we've, I think John has pretty much covered what uh, would, uh, be for the folks here in town, but they have a wonderful website if anybody's interested in all the things they do. The El Dorado Transportation Commission has a great website. They can just key into it, and it's just um, very self-explanatory. And good anyway, stuff. good stuff. So it was a great meeting. Yes, it was. Okay, uh, Lafco. We meet later this month. Okay, uh, SACOG. Um, we, it was a, a, one of the committee meetings, and uh, my transportation committee, and uh, the, they, we had an interesting presentation, which I am kind of toying with the idea of having them come up and make to us, and it's about senior citizens and transportation <coughs> and mobility and just a lot of the thinking now around mobility and as in the, the it's no secret the you know there's like the, the there's like this millennials and then there's o us old people and uh, and <laughs> dealing with us old people well you're not part of that yet so uh dealing with us old people um and all the transportation stuff and how it's really changing very quickly some of the dynamics and i'm some waiting of the for the self-driving the self-driving cars, the self -driving cars. Oh yeah yeah I, the, all the assumptions and everything and but but more importantly the synergy and how folks are working together and bringing things to their communities which i thought might be useful here because we have uh, an, ol an older population el dorado county is the second oldest county in the state i believe or the oldest it's one of the two and uh, uh and but very healthy Correct. so you got a bunch of baby boomers that are actually in fairly decent shape and and we're out there doing stuff and so uh, bicycles. <laughs> there you go and so uh i'm kind of toying with the idea of having them come up and make that presentation to us so but that was the one intriguing thing and all the bits that were part of that but otherwise uh, nothing else okay uh said corp Okay, we are going to have the final meeting, and unfortunately, it's the <laughs> after time. all I have gone through <laughs> and attended <laughs> all these meetings, <laughs> um, it's <laughs> the same day as transit and transportation. Oh, you're kidding. No, you so I can't go. So um, we're going to have the final meeting, and I'll give you a report on how they finalized oh, okay. it. And were there any two-by-twos no. recently? No. Okay. Uh, do we have any requests for future agenda items okay I actually have a request I don't know if it can I don't I don't think it needs to be an I agenda. have one but oh I'm I don't sorry, want to bring it up because I'm afraid to <laughs> so well mention it to me later then and I'll bring yes. it up we'll, we'll see okay. if it works okay um, <laughs> there's one item that I think uh, 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 um, I've actually talked to some folks already about this, but this night uh, at the last PDA meeting, a very nice young man who went to El Dorado High School wants to do this apple fringe or whatever it is, and it's going to, what is it called again? What is it for apple? Apple core fringe. Apple core fringe, and it does performances downtown or in, or in here. Uh, in various venues, there's smallish kind of performances, and there's supposed to be a number of them. There's three, two three-day weekends, if I remember correctly, in September. The kid was off the wall in terms of enthusiasm, and he'd really thought this thing out. He had gone to other ones in other places. This is not a new idea. And then it occurred to me, it would be nice, and, and, and I actually asked the question about uh, Old City Hall, because as soon as he started talking about venues I immediately thought of Old City Hall uh, but we also can't kill anybody and so we want to make sure that Old City Hall could be used like so I would like the to mustard or the ketchup? The ke well the, the mustard side is <laughs> occupied the ketchup side the, the part that's unoccupied and I've talked to I did talk to Rebecca briefly about this and and it, it's may very well be something like you got to be crazy no or it might be maybe for a short duration of time because I think it would be really valuable to have something going on in that building, it would show the community that, you know, right now, I mean, it looks fine. You wouldn't know that nothing's going on in there if you just w walked by it. But it would be nice to know, <laughs> it would be nice to show the community that something can be done. And then I have other crazy ideas around that subject. But, so I'd, I'd like the staff maybe or someone to say, yes, and I, t I wanted to take a minute because I know staff is buried right now in work. Yes, it's doable or no, it's not. And it's got to be a fairly 
easy decision. If it's, and I don't want to have to say, yes, it's doable if we all win the lottery, but yes, it's doable and it passes the giggle test. And then to try to figure out if it can be done. And then I'd be willing to, fa to run that to chart, run that charge if I can get the okay from the professionals to say, yeah, it's doable. Oh, it's a safety issue. It's a safety issue, yeah. And, and, and if the building's unsafe, then I don't right, want to exactly. do it. But if it, if it passes the giggle test, I'd like to get together with this young man and see if it's a venue that could possibly be used because I think mm -hmm. it would cool. be fantastic. Yeah, it'd be really neat. Anyway, that's it. I don't know if that's an agenda item or just talking to those you folks. But I'm going to bring that up. I just okay. want to talk to him, too. Because okay, then that's fine. Mm, we'll talk. I have a horrible... <laughs> okay. Uh, the sanctuary city. Okay, that's... I, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that offline. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you and I will talk about that offline. Okay. Okay. I understand. So are we... Um, I, I, okay. I'll Any, tell you what keeps coming up yeah. to me. People keep talking to me about it. Are we going to have a discussion or is there going to be some kind of presentation about how far along we are with the homeless issue? I can answer that question. I went to, uh. a, I went to a, a big meeting uh, yesterday more afternoon. That's this continuation of care or continuum of care and then the uh, opportunity knocks and just about everybody that gets involved in this stuff pretty much on an official basis, and we had a meeting at the Office of Education yesterday. The groups are being sort of put together, and then there's probably going to have to be some reconstitution of committees and, and groups and stuff that have been working. The death yeah. of Elliot. And well, well, I don't think this was in the this was in the uh, works well before oh, Elliot's okay. demise. In any event, and I think it's a timely question, but I think I wouldn't ask the question or have anybody come and say anything. Probably I would give them at least another couple of months. Well, that's why I ask yeah. because people keep asking yeah. me, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? You know, because I think by then they'll have a better organization. And we keep saying we've, we're planning and we've got all this you right. know, going, but we don't. Uh, uh, so I think if we just had some something that we could. The, 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 the county put uh, oh, Daniel, I'm going to call him um, Del Monte. I think that's his last name. Really, I didn't make that up. But it's something very similar to that. Anyway, he's uh, in the uh, CAO's office. He's been put in charge of this. They have some other people that they've actually now they're putting resources at the county that are organizing all this stuff. Uh, they have actually given this an outfit called Only Kindness, mm -hmm. who have sort of taken over some of the working levers and gears and stuff on an actual contractual mm -hmm. basis. So they're being asked to do something. Okay. And... Um, um, this is why I, I hate this dais, because if you actually talk out to where the audience is, you ignore 40% of the city council, which bugs the heck out of me. Anyway. You got two. Uh, I know. Ones. Anyway, the point is, the point is, though, I think in a couple of months okay. that it would maybe the time is ripe. And what I'll do is I'll get together with Wendy, because she's the actual person that's going to be the city council's person on this right, right. group. I will get together with her, and then she can work out the details of having somebody come. But I would imagine it's not going to be for a couple of months. Okay. They need to get kind of together. Okay. A lot thank of good you. stuff, though. They had some really good ideas. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, city manager and staff reports. Anything else? Just a couple of quick things. First thing I wanted to mention is um, our parking meters are in and mm -hmm. Running, I used um, one. You you awesome. you oh. may be hearing some complaints. There of are course. some issues that we're still dealing with and, and cleaning yeah. up. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm sure you will hear hear more because there are some people that have that have talked to us. I did want to announce that we'll be putting some information out. That there is a mobile app now that is up and running, oh, cool. so that Mayor Creechy, you could sit from your chair where you're at right now and put time on your car, uh, add oh, time to your awesome. car where it's parked in the garage if it were So you don't have to garage. like walk. No. You don't have or to walk yes. back. Or and yes. you can actually, you can actually <laughs> initiate your parking from that. You don't yes. have to <laughs> add to it. You can initiate it. And uh, we're going to be putting and out some information. And you have to use license plate numbers, right? You yeah. do have to use license yeah. plate numbers. I've got to That's figure cool. mine out. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I've heard a lot of people say that. You just scan it, right? And then it's <laughs> One of these yeah. things, uh, more and more, I know not everybody does, but with the uh, way to park the smartphone app, uh, yes. it stores that number in there yes. for yeah. you. So, so you, once good. you've done it once, you're, if you you're there. <laughs> if you have a smartphone. I, 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 I clarify that. Yeah, I had to qualify that. <laughs> All right. That's so that's a good. One. So um, we're we're moving forward. With that I think the machines, once people learn them, uh, they, they operate a whole lot faster. They're I think they're easy to use. Uh, avoid all the signage that we've had for the old machines, and uh, 
I think we're we're making progress. With Good. That. Ah. All right. Welcome um, to 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I want to also mention uh, the monument project. Do you want me to do that, or would you like to? Or? <laughs> so uh, we have an Eagle Scout project happening oh. in town. Uh, as many of you know, the monument that is located uh, across the street from in front of City Hall in the Center Street parking lot that is half fallen over and uh, the forgotten monument. Um, <laughs> anyway, we've run into a time crunch with this uh, particular Eagle Scout, and so he is going to move very quickly. As of Wednesday night, he will be beginning to tear the current monument down, oh, good. tear it apart, and rebuild it. So it looks nice, it, it, and, and he's actually, for now, going to put it back in that same spot where it's at. But no, no, There's a reason. There's a reason, because he doesn't have, if, if we go through the process to identify where it's going to be, he will miss his deadline and miss getting his eagle. Oh. So oh. I want to explain that's the reason why. However, when he builds it, it's going to be built, um, the part that would normally be underground, they're going to put probably some, um, some hooks or rebar on that. Uh, Steve Yule already has a commitment from a crane operator that will move it for us to the location where we oh, want it great. to be. Oh, so we'll go great. through that process of determining the proper location for it um, and and put it back up. Uh, and I think we've contacted all the necessary people. But I just want to let you know, in case you hear people come in, hey, somebody's mm -hmm. taking a sledgehammer to that <laughs> monument down there. Uh, that's well, that's the reason okay. why. <laughs> Absolutely. And so that, that's going to be well, starting actually The majority of people night. do not even know that that monument exactly. is there, and that's why I've been so interested in getting yeah. it moved so that we can... I think it'll be a terrific project. He'll fix it up so it'll at least be sitting straight and look good where it's at, but we will continue to work to, to get that moved and identify a new location. That's for wonderful it. news. Great. Um, yeah, I talked to Cleveland. Anything else? Staff reports. Anyway, yeah, I, think I had talked to Cleve about this, and we kind of came up with a way for the young man to get his his eagle because we Good. don't we That's no we want no ob obstructions on the path to eagle. So, right. um, okay, upcoming items. Um, let's see here. We have a large uh, audience. Well, I know, but I still are going to do this. I, people I people actually watch us on TV. <laughs> a proclamation <laughs> designating May 29, 2017, as Memorial Day, at the El Dorado County Veterans Monument. NAMI <laughs> recognition of officer for C. Okay, that's two. But what are those? NAMI and CIT. What is that? NAMI recognition of officer for CIT award. Chief, Chief can you have the CIT? Is, okay. um, <laughs> Critical the incident right? training. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Critical instrument tra in incident training. Yeah. Solid waste collection rates, Christmas parade sponsorship, hazardous tree removal plan, Western Plasville Interchange Project, Phase 2 of right-of-way acquisition, water reclamation facility bypass work plan, and the Unified Confidential and Supervisory Employee Unit Memorandum of Understanding, and that's it. So we have, um, yeah. so we've got a number of items. Oh. Okay. We've got our next meeting. Waste collection yeah. coming ne up. Yeah. Are they going to raise our waste? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to have a report. Oh. Next oh. next meeting will be held on May 23rd, 2017 at 5.30 p.m. Closed session and 6 o'clock p.m. Regular session. Go home. Thank you.